Welcome back to our AP Chemistry Notes over Ka, Kb, and buffers. And I say it that way because of what we're going to be looking at today. Previously, we looked at how you find a Ka, and we looked at also how you can take a Ka to find unknown equilibrium amounts of your ions from your weak acids. And I want to introduce to you today the idea of Kb. That is an equilibrium constant for a base. Go figure where the B comes from, right? So what difference is there in Kb compared to Ka? None. It works exactly the same. The little b is just a label like all of our other little labels. We had Kc, Kp, Ksp, Keq. Um, it, it doesn't matter. They're all just special forms of an equilibrium constant. They're all just special Ks. So it's really going to make no difference to the work we're doing. You would just want to be very careful on the AP test not to write Ka equals if you're working with the base and not to write Kb equals if you're working with an acid. Honestly, between you and me, the safe way to go is to just not even put any letters after the K at all, and then you don't have that problem. Because it certainly would be fine to say K equals and be more general than to specify and specify it wrong. So just watch out for that. But we're going to work some problems with KB just so that you have some familiarity with how KB equations work. And again, you're going to see the calculations and the method is no different than before. So here's our question. Calculate the hydroxide concentration for 0.2 molar solution of ammonia. I'm not saying ammonium. I'm saying ammonia. That's what NH3 is. And they give me the KB. Okay. So let's write my equation to focus. Now this is interesting. Ammonia is not an arena space where you have hydroxide that will ionize. Ammonia is a bronze to Lowry base where you're going to have the ability to accept a hydrogen from water or some other compound. In this case, water, because we don't have any other compound around, but to be a base, it has to be in water. So what's going to be made is ammonium ion and some hydroxide ion. And that's what we're looking for is the concentration of that hydroxide ion there. OK, so I'm going to build a little rice table. I'm starting with 0.20 molarity. And it's just fine to work in molarities in my rice table. You can work in molarities. You can work in moles. You can work in tors and atmospheres and millimeters of mercury. Don't work in grams. Please don't work in grams. Don't work in liters. Please don't work in liters, OK? Work in one of those things I've mentioned. Now, here's the interesting part. We're like, well, I know I have some water around. How much water? It doesn't freaking matter, because this is pure water. And we don't include pure liquids and pure solids into our equilibrium expression. So the best news in the world is we're going to ignore that column entirely. Yay. OK, I had 0 this to start with and 0 that to start with. Now, the change. I don't know how much I'm going to lose there, but because it's a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, I know whatever I lose there, I will gain there and I will gain there. And so at equilibrium, I am looking for this x here. This is what I'm targeting. What is that amount? So here I have 0 0.20 molarity minus x. Now already, I'm going to be like, hey, look at my K, look at my yes, yes, yes. OK, so you would make some statement about we're going to assume, OK, we've talked about this many times before, assume that you can say this is approximately equal to 0 0.20 molarity. Save us from doing quadratic equation. So let's write our KB expression. KB is products. That would be ammonium ion times hydroxide ion divided by our ammonia. And again, I point out, we don't include pure liquids and pure solids into our K expressions. And so with KSP, we did not include solid silver iodides or things like that. We're not going to include liquid water in here. This whole column, yeah, you don't have to squiggle it out like I do. But with that whole column is not going to matter. Because the amount that we use up of it is going to be so tiny, it's not going to matter. Especially considering I probably have some huge concentration, like 15.5 molarity water, 
and I'm going to use up such a tiny amount, by the time we round to sig digs, it made no difference. Okay, now I do actually know that my KB is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So, well, that didn't work. Come on back. Okay, so now we're going to do our math. So I have x squared on top, because that's x, that's x, and I'm going to divide by 0.02 molarity, and I'm going to say that is equal to, one of these days, it will stop doing that on me. That is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so now, yay, calculator time. I know we look forward to this each and every time, don't we? I'm going to take my 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, and I'm going to multiply by 0.2. And don't forget to finish it off by taking the square root of it or to raise it to the one-half power, or to raise it to the 0.5 power, okay? Be, be able to use your calculator well. Okay, and I'm going to leave in scientific notation because I just feel like it. So X, and what I would care about is the concentration of hydroxide ion is 1.9 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 3 molarity because it's a concentration. You know, I was using molarities in my rice table. So there we go. Now we can go back here and say, was I safe in making this assumption? Well, yeah, when I do that subtraction and then I round back to two sig digs, I would be back where I started from. And especially here, well, that didn't work. Especially here with water where I'm like at 15.5 molarity or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be back to where I started from by the time around to sig digs. So there's my answer for that. What's the difference between using that to find concentration of H with Ka or concentration of OH with Kb? Absolutely none. We did this exact type of problem last time. It just was a Ka and an H plus problem. That's all that there is to it. So Kbs are no different than Kas. They're nice and easy, just like Kas. Uh, I hope you have no fear of KBs by the time we're done today because there's nothing to be fearful of. Let's try this. Calculate the pH for a 0.2 molar solution of NH3. KB is blah, blah, blah. Oh, now we're afraid, right? Because it's a pH, but wait, it's a base. Well, we can get there. Don't worry. I do point this out. 0.2 molarity solution of NH3. KB equals that. 0.2 molar solution of NH3, Kb equals that. It's the same problem. So now all I'm doing is going from what I just found to a pH. So don't redo the work if you don't have to. Please, 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 on the AP test, because it's a time test, don't redo the work when you don't have to. This very much would be like a maybe part A and part B, and here comes a part C. Now that I know the OH concentration, let's find the pH. So I'm going to rewrite what we had on the last slide just to give us a foundation. 1.9 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. Negative 3. Molarity. Lots of ways I could go from here. So I'm going to demonstrate them. Okay, I'm going to go two different ways to find a pH just so you can see an example of how it's done. You obviously have your option, but the best part of doing it twice is you get to check your work. The downside is it's going to take you twice as long, so please don't do that on the AP test. But on your homework, definitely a good thing to check work. Let's try taking to find POH. Let's take the negative log of the concentration of OH. Something interesting is going to happen here. Check this out. Okay. I'm going to type it in my calculator, so negative, um, that is if I can find my log button, there it is, negative log of the 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So check this out, I get two point, and I'm going to go to two digits after the decimal because that is actually officially how a pH sig digs work. It's the decimals after the, wow, the numbers after the decimal that should match your amount of sig digs. Um, on the AP test, I cannot imagine that's a point for knowing where to run a pH or pOH number two. 
but there you are. Okay, I do want to point this out. My exponent here was negative 3, and my number here is less than 3. That's expected. Had this number been a 1 times 10 to the negative 3, this number would have turned out to be exactly 3, because that's how pH and pOH work. But because this number here is a little greater, this number is going to be a little less. That's the way that's going to work, so just be aware of that. Okay, now I'm actually going to go and erase what I wrote there because I want that out of my way. I don't want that confusing anything else that's coming in a minute. Now that I have pOH, I want to know the concentration of, there it is, I want to know the, the pH. And I know pOH plus pH equals 14. So to find my pH, I just need 14 minus 2.72. That's a 2.72 there, okay? So 14 minus 2.72. Hopefully you can do it in your head even. They would expect you to be able to do something like that on the multiple choice where you don't get a calculator, but there's my pH. So I did it by first finding a pOH, and then I found a pH. That was one method. The other method, I'm going to go this way, is to find concentration of H+. Plus. And concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 14 uh, and molarity squared, okay, because that way our labels work out. Um, so I point this out. This formula is on the AP formula chart. This formula is on the AP formula chart. So I'm not having to memorize any of these, and, and they give me the pH. They don't give me a pH one, but the pH version is on the formula chart. So uh, these are things they would expect you to calculate. They don't expect you to memorize formulas. So how do I find concentration of H? Well, I'm going to do division. Hopefully you see that. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 molarity squared divided by 1.9 times 10 to the negative 3 molarity and that's going to be equal to 0.2. Helps if I type it in correctly. And if you're not trying these yourself in the calculator, you're doing yourself a disservice in practice of using the calculator. Okay. So I get 5.26. Times 10 to the negative 12 molarity. Okay? So I point this out. Whenever you do things like this, well, that didn't work. Whenever you do things like this, these two numbers here should multiply to be very close to the number 10, and these exponents should add up to be negative 15. So you can kind of check your work that the math went right in that you get 10, 10 times 10 to the negative 15. And if that's the case, 10 times 10 to the negative 15, when put back into proper scientific notation, becomes 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So it's a quick little way to check your math, be sure you're on the right track. Anyway, there's my, my concentration of H, so now my pH is the negative log of 5.26 times 10 to the negative 12 molarity, which is, and check it out, there's the negative 12, but it is a number bigger than 1, so I'm going to be slightly less than 12. So not going to be a big surprise when I find that, well, it helps if I type it in correctly. I am really not doing well with my calculator which is one, probably one of the reasons they're actually trying to avoid using the calculator on the AP exam. They just figure it's, it's less unchemistry that you can mess up on. Anyway, and there's that answer there. A little less than 12, because that's a, more than one, and check it out. Yes, in fact, I do get the same answer both ways. So two different ways you can work it. You can go from OH to H to pH, you can go from OH to pOH to pH. Now, if I'm having to do this in my head on the multiple choice, I'm probably going to work this direction, just because I can do this math a little easier in my head. But it certainly would be totally up to you 
how to work that. So that's how we would find the pH. And it does not surprise me that with ammonia a weak base, I'm in the weak base region of the pH scale. And I'm in the, where's my pOH? There we go. I'm in the weak base region of the pOH scale as well. So beware how the pOH scale works in addition to the pH scale. Okay, final KB thing I want to work with you. Calculate the percent ionization for a 0.20 molarity solution of NH3 and KB. So it's the same, it's the same problem we've had before. Now maybe this is like part D. So you see how they can take one problem and get like four to five questions over it. Now if this is the short question, they're probably going to be done after now. If this is the long question, what they're probably going to do is now start morphing it into another type of problem. Maybe go from a Ka question to a Gibbs energy question, because we know how K and G are related. Or maybe go from a K equation into, and you can just look in your formula chart for all the different things K is equal to, and you can start changing it from one thing to another. Or even, you know, other ways of doing that. Okay, they want to know that you understand how chemistry is connected, all the topics connect in some manner. And, and the bridges, I'll give you a hint, the bridges are always formulas on your formula chart. So be sure you understand what is on the formula chart because that's how you would connect one topic to another. Okay, because I'm looking for percent ionization and I'm doing the same thing as before, I need a part over whole. I need the part ionized. So I'm going to go back two screens now to find the part that was ionized. The part that was ionized is X. And it doesn't matter which X I grab, whether it's ammonium or hydroxide, it's going to be the same. So there's my part. The part that has ionized, the part I have lost, is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So I'm going to start with that. 1.9. Well, maybe I would start with, come on. There we go. 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity. And now I need my whole. Well, my starting amount is 0 0.20 molarity. So that's how much I started with. That's how much I'm losing to the ionization. And you've got to show that times 100. I don't know why they have decided on the test that that is important, but they have decided that that is important. So you better do that because they have decided that is important. Have I said that enough times that you realize they have decided that that is important? Okay. So show the times 100, please. So I'm going to type this into my calculator. Lots of fun in the calculator. And I get, check this out, this is even after multiplying by 100. 0.95%. Okay, so not even 1% is ionized in a fifth of a molar of NH3. So curious, if this was 2 molar and not 0.2 molar, would that change the percent ionized? Well, the way to work, no, is to work through another rice table and find out. Um, but I would leave that for you to figure out. It would be a nice little nifty trivia to know. Probably no real common applicable purpose on the test. But if that helps cement something into your brain in terms of logical thinking of chemistry, then please do that. Anyway, there's my answer. Less than 1% has ionized, which is not unexpected considering how small my KB is. If this had been like 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2, I would be expecting much larger ionization. But it's not, so I, I do expect a small amount ionized. And there we go. Okay, so that is how KB works. I hope you saw it works just like a KA. hope you saw some other applications of both KA and KB. We can find percent ionizations. We can find pHs. Lots and lots and lots of stuff we can do with KA and KB. So be ready to practice that, and I will see you next time.